and welcome to today's hour-long painting lesson cut up thing. Today is actually pretty special as we'll be working on this lesson right here. It was the very first lesson on Patreon. Since then we put up over 36 more, adding four new ones a month. Um, but it, it was the first and it's special. Now, as per usual, if you'd like the digital sketch or hour long version, they are up on Patreon along with over 36 others. So go check that out if you're interested. But I also wanted to mention the book sale. There are only two more weeks left on it. All books are 25% off. That includes painting prompts for beginners. And if you're unaware, painting prompts for beginners is essentially 21 digital sketches for days when you're not inspired, but you still want to create something. You still want to get better at painting. You essentially pick a sketch from the book, you transfer it to canvas, and then you get painting. You don't have to worry about the ideas, about the drawing process. It's just there and ready for you. There are a bunch of waterfall paintings, just like this one. And if you'd like something a little bit more broad, my other book acrylics for beginners is also 25% off in it we talk about everything you need to know before you jump into your first acrylic painting we talk about what brushes to use how to use water what is glazing how to mix your colors all of it so go check that out link in the description 25% off for two more weeks all of that being said let's jump into today's very special hour-long lesson. So I'm going to begin here with my large square headed brush because it can cover a lot of surface area I'm going to begin by dipping it in water. This will get my paint to have a little bit more coverage. It'll thin it. But I'm also going to wipe it off here. Now it's not stiff. It's a little bit moist, which is good for our application. Now I'm going to grab some black on one side. I'm going to grab some yellow on the other. And I'm going to start working it in right here. I'm going to move in X patterns because with X patterns, we don't end up getting too much of a streaky aesthetic in case some people just start like that and you just get all of these lines, but that's not really what I want. Then I'm going to grab some blue, I'm going to grab some more yellow, and I'm going to work that on top. My goal here is to render a very dark backing area of the forest that we can build up on and we can add light as we move through it. Now, because we've been fairly inconsistent with what we're grabbing, sometimes I'll grab yellow, sometimes I'll grab blue, you can see that we are getting an interesting mix of application. You have some spots that are more green than others, and that's great because it's like the light's coming through the forest in different areas, illuminating different portions. And now, I'm going to draw in some distant trees. They're going to be almost unnoticeable. And as we move forward in our painting, our trees are going to get more noticeable, one. And two, they are going to get larger because of perspective. The farther away something is, the smaller it's going to look. The closer it is, the larger it's going to look. We're also ensuring that all of our trees aren't straight up. We're moving them around. Now, we're going to grab one of our square headed brushes that is very damaged you can you can damage it more by just playing with it like that and i'm actually not going to dip this in the water because i don't want these to get soft and condense i'm going to leave it fairly rough like that i'm then going to go grab some yellow grab a little bit of blue grab some more yellow I'm going to grab all of that i'm going to start dabbing on some foliage in different areas. I'm turning my brush as I apply it in the air, not while I'm applying it, but in the air, and this is going to ensure that each dabbing motion is going to look slightly different than the one next to it. Now we're going to go back to our little brush here and apply even more trees. This time we're not going to apply the black in with the white and the brown. That way we get something much brighter. We're going to try to move it on top of some of the previously applied trees and the foliage as well. I'm being fairly selective with where I apply these because they are quite stark. I don't want too many of them. 
Oh, there we go. It's nice when they kind of blend in with the green behind them, because the green would reflect light onto them, and they would adopt that, so it wouldn't be a pure brown. We're actually going to take a break from this. This area is not done, that is just our background. But I want to dry, and I want to create the rock formation for our waterfall, because we'll also need to let that dry before we go back to it. So I'm taking my large, square-headed brush, taking some black pigment, and I am simply applying it. Now, we are going to give it shape. As you can see, it's kind of just a line. And I want to start it from, say, down here, using a square-headed brush because it's very sharp, and it'll render me really nice, clean lines like that. And that is where a large border will be. Now, again, because I want clean lines, I'm going to grab more water, more black, and create another little area for a boulder. As you can see, it goes fairly high, so we might actually want to extend a good portion of this outwards. It's always going to be building. Now what we're going to do is go back to our trees. So, what I'm going to do is take this small brush, go over here, grab some of that white, some of that brown that we had before, and now that this is dry, this color won't mix in with it. It'll be placed on top of it. So we won't get the green and it'll stand out much more dominantly. So we're going to begin here, building it upwards, moving it to a side so it is not straight, Grabbing some more paint, and if it gets a little bit toothy, your application, just grab more water, grab more paint. It's really the easiest way of going about it. I'll have it leaf off in this direction as well, and then up here. As we get higher and higher, the branches get smaller and smaller and my application gets lighter and lighter. Now, over here, this has had some good time to dry, so we're going to switch over to a medium-sized square-headed brush. I guess I'll go with this one. I'm going to wet it, then I'm going to grab some brown, move that back over here for you, some brown, a little bit of red, just to warm the color, and some white. And this is going to be for our rocks on our waterfall here. So we're just going to start applying this to the tops of rocks that are going to be getting light. And then the light's going to move itself downwards. And these are going to be kind of all of the flat edges that the water is going to fall upon. Let's now move into our foliage over here yet again. This time, getting a very small square-headed brush. Putting water on it, taking yellow, mixing it into our green, and this time, for the first time, grabbing white. This is going to desaturate it to a point, but as long as we have enough yellow, which is a very vibrant color, it'll look good. And now, we're going to add some leaves, individual ones. Again, we want to do it in clusters. If I want my leaves to be a little bit farther away, I'm using less pressure. Now we're going to work on the waterbed. Generally, you think that should be blue. However, still rock underneath the blue. And I want the water, you, you can see the water on top, but then you can also see what's under it. So we're going to start with the water, doing it in a very similar way that we did that. So I'm going to take some black, I'm going to take a little bit of brown, a little bit of red, and work that all in. I didn't do this initially when we had our 
rock formation being painted because I wanted to focus on the rock formation. I didn't want the canvas to get too busy too quickly. Then I'm going to take a lot of brown and a little bit of white. I'm going to apply that down here, closer to the foreground, farther away from that. That way, when you look in the water, you see more of this brown close to us because it'll be more transparent closer to us. And then as we move backwards, it dissipates into more of the black. Now we are going to get to the really fun part, and that is adding water to our waterfall. We had to let all of this dry initially, and now we're going to go back in. So we have a couple of options here. We can use a very soft and synthetic square brush, or we can use a very rough brush, the same kind that we'd use for that sort of thing. So we're actually going to go back to our soft synthetic brush so I can show you what that looks like too. It's a little bit wet, we have this, and it's okay to have this one wet, okay? So, let's pick an area up here. I'm going to have it leaf off this rock, and then very softly fall. I'm relieving pressure with my brush as we get to the bottom. And you want to keep it as straight as possible. Gets really easy the more you do it. So again, we start on the top of a rock. Make it a little more complicated that time. Add water to the brush, wipe it off, and drag that paint down while it's still wet. Acrylic paint's dry, darker by a little bit. So we will have to go back and do this over some areas a couple of times. You can also put individual streaks like that, of course. Be very careful that they're actually straight. If you need it to dissipate easily, use your finger. We can even go back and forth and lift some of the previously applied paint upwards so you can see through the paint a little bit more. Gives it another neat little effect. We are going to let this part dry. And in the meantime, we're going to move down into the water. For that, I'm going to be grabbing a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, a lot of white. We want it to be more white than blue. And we're going to start from here in horizontal strokes that move slightly downwards. We're making a bunch of Zs. Occasionally we're relieving pressure with our brush. And what this is, it's the water, but you can still see the ground underneath it, which is really cool. I'm going to ensure that I leave open areas near the edge of the grass so you can still really see the mud and the water and all of that beauty and texture there as well. Just going to add this extra interesting element to all of it. Now we are going to take our medium sized round headed brush, get a little bit of water on it, get a little bit of white paint, mix it out on the palette here, a little bit more water, dry it off. We're essentially just trying to get a very thin consistency of white paint. Then we're going to go down to the bottom area here and blend it around in circular motions. As you can see, it's almost essentially water, but it's better to start off with that pure water than it is with a lot of paint. Then we're going to slowly add more paint. So I'll grab some more white, mix it in with the water, reapply until I get the consistency that I want. And I want it to be a white, but I also want it to be fairly see-through. I still want to see all of these lines in between. And I'm going to blend it upwards. Now we're going to separate this from the fog. We're just going to take our white and move that over some of these areas that need that distinguishing point. There we are. 
Now because we covered the tree, we do have to go back in and work with that. So I'm going to grab my smaller square headed brush yet again, grab some brown paint, a little bit of white, and rework on those branches. This time, we're going to be going over the waterfall. It's going to overlap it. It's really interesting. Grab more water so we have more control. Creating very small branches. You can even bring it back over here. Then I'm going to go in and reapply more little leaves here. Really nice. Almost done. But let's make sure we have some nice foliage down here. We're going to do that in a very, very 10 minute painting style way. We're going to take a brush that's very broken. It leaves off in a lot of directions. I'm going to take some yellow, good amount of yellow, a little bit of blue, mix it into the white a tiny bit. And we'll do our dabbing effect to create a nice little bush here. Frame the painting. That way we have foliage in almost all of the corners. It's kind of interesting. We'll also take a little bit of black, put it on the corner of the edge, create a little bit of a vignette, have it move inwards, trying to keep the application fairly random. There we are. Now we're going to go in and add some rocks. We're just going to do that by taking some black and some dark brown, picking an area, working it around the water. We're not giving it a flat bottom, we're giving it a bottom that's kind of different and moving. You want all of your rocks to look slightly different. Then we're going to take our white, and add highlights to our rocks. But not too many. You don't want it to blend into the water. Hey there, it's Ryan O'Rourke. I truly hope you enjoyed today's little extra video. It was essentially a cut up version of one of the many hour long lessons which we offer over on patreon.com. Over there you'll also find digital sketches of the 10 minute painting lessons, digital sketches of these hour long painting lessons, and a bunch of reference photos as well. So if any of that interests you, or if you just want to support the channel, go over there and check it out. It is a pleasure to make these long form videos and I love to share them with all of you. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Saturday with a new video and above all, as always, stay creative.